All right, hey, what's up guys? So today let's talk about offset red dots. Now offset red dots have been uh, around for quite a while, so it's nothing new, it's nothing too revolutionary or any of that bullshit, but uh, what it is is that uh, red dots, or, or offset red dots, um, they were originally, or at least I originally saw them on competitors' rifles, right? So like three gun, two gun rifles. Um, and then I saw them on sniper rifles. And, um, and then more originally, like in the army at least, I saw them piggybacked on ACOGs, on, uh, on LCANs, and, and stuff like that. So really that, that's where my uh, origin of understanding what offset red dots were. Um, that's where it came from. And then uh, all of a sudden we had this emergence of LPVOs that have been getting better and better over the years. So people have been messing around with more offset red dots on them, me being one of them. So I, I really enjoy having an offset red dot. Um, I use offset red dots as a um, removal of my irons. So like a, um, an alternative, if you want to call it that, and a better alternative, <laughs> realistically. So what, what we're going to talk about are the two different types of uh, offset red dots um, or two different styles of offset red dot. One is to cant it, uh, or like to like a 45 degree or even a 33 degree. And, uh, and one is to 12 o'clock that bad boy. So you have some options and, and some, some reasonings for both of them, right? Some pros and cons and, and all that jazz. And what we have here are some, or we'll talk about first on the canted side, we have some pros, right? So some pros on the canted optic side is that it does add a lower profile height wise, right? So when, when looking at this, uh, it doesn't add more to the height of the optic depending on your optic mount. If you have a really high mount, like this is a 193, yeah, it's gonna be tall. But if you have a shorter one, like a 15, it's gonna be just as tall as you're used to for most sniper application or sniper scope applications. Then we have the same cheek weld, depending once again on which ones you choose, like mounts for these different optics, um, you're going to have a similar cheek weld. So your cheek weld doesn't have to change, your cheek height doesn't have to change, it's literally just a rotation. And this rotation can be super, super fast. It's really cool. So uh, it depends on your training as well. Now the other good part about this setup is that your optic heights can vary. So based off of your application and what you're trying to do with it, um, if you're trying to do very uh, precision-based scope stuff for longer distance, yeah, maybe you want a shorter optic height, right? So bringing this bad boy down, but hey, if I'm gonna shoot really quick and really fast and really like, and wanna be able to passively shoot under night vision, maybe I'm gonna use a 193 height offset dot. So just something to think about there. So. That's kind of a cool thing. Yes, it's gonna offset your cheek weld at that point, you're gonna to have to change that, but once again, just another training issue, nothing too serious. Then uh, transitions, right? So transitioning back and forth, like I mentioned, can be really, really quick. Once again, has to be trained in practice. Using the dot with white light is actually kind of clean. So um, for those of you that are worried about scope shadow off of like a suppressor, what what ends up happening when you mount your lights, and, and if you could see my light here, it's mounted at the, the three o'clock to me. To you guys, it looks like nine o'clock. And, and for this, uh, one of the reasons for it is so that it gets out of the way of my laser devices so I could still use lasers. So my white light is off to the side. Now that white light, if I have a suppressor on there, it causes a little bit of scope shadow, and the shadow is to the left side of my gun. So does it matter? Not really. But if I have any weir worries about it, I can rotate the gun and now my light is almost on top, causing scope shadow to be low or at six o'clock. Something that is a perk to having the red dot on the side for CQB purposes is now that my shadowing becomes on the lower side, if that's something that you care about. Not really, a, it doesn't really matter to me all that much. Scope shadow is kind of a, uh, it's like a not a problem problem that people have. Then let's talk about some of the cons, right? Some of the cons to the little red dot that's offset to the uh, to the candid side or, or 45 degree side. 
stock placement can be awkward. So for some people, that's an awkward stock placement, right? It's, it's not normal. It's kind of weird and canted. <laughs> that's the name. Um, but it, it can be weird. Uh, once again, just a training issue. Going further, uh, ambi, right? It's not ambi. This is not an ambi setup. So if I had to switch over to my left side, right, because I'm a right-hand shooter, I would have to just use my, up, my, my main optic, not my cannon offset. Now there is a way of using it where you can go ahead and can't outboard. The problem is I cannot get a cheek weld when I can it outboard. Also, it's very awkward and very straining on my back. Kind of depends on the person at that point. Um, I have seen where occasionally I'll catch it with my right eye, but my head needs to be canted in a really funny position for it. So just something to pay attention to. It's not very ambi uh, friendly. Uh, going further, zeroing. Zeroing could be problematic, guys. Uh, one of the things that I see a lot of guys do is they, they just guesstimate on zeros half the time. They just don't care enough. Uh, your zero fucking matters, right? Like it matters that you get a good zero at a good distance and you understand your holds. Just flat out. You can't argue that. Now, the uh, optic being canted at a 45 or 33 or whatever the hell, that means that I need to somehow stabilize the gun and get a consistent amount of shots at that distance, make my adjustment, and then same thing. Some people can't hold it there in, in place perfectly. So um, one of the things I recommend people do is either mount a bipod to the gun and tighten it down at the perfect level, use a bubble level maybe, or, or something of the sort to help you uh, stabilize the firearm in that canted orientation so that you can get those good shots and get a good zero out of it. If you don't care, I mean, that's on you, man, but you're wrong. Um, going further, uh, depending on, on the mount, uh, it can be blocked, right? Your optic could be blocked by your light or laser. So if this mount was shorter, uh, like a 1.5, what I find is the 1.5 height gets blocked by lights that are at a 45 or by lasers like the mall or like lights like the cloud owl, right? Because the cloud owl hangs off to the right side here and it can obscure some of that window. So if you're gonna use one of those lights or you're like, you use that light setup or that laser setup, you may wanna go for a higher red dot that way, uh, like a 193 height, that way you're not obscuring your actual uh, uh, dot. Now, <clears throat> Arasaka makes a fantastic offset dot uh, mount. Uh, this, that's the one I use, it's super low profile. They also have an option where you can take it from 45 degrees, flip it, bring it closer to the optic area, and then you have a 33 degree. So right now it's at the 45 for you, but if I pulled this mounting plate off and I rotated it uh, the opposite way, it would sit closer and it would be at more of a 33 degree. So something similar or something like this is gonna be something cool that you have an option to play with. And why not, man? We live in America, options, girl. So, <laughs> um, and then the last thing is it may or may not work with your gas mask, helmet, and ear pro setup. So uh, here you can see me with my Opsquare SF, um, my Avon C50, and my amps. I can barely see the dot. So it's really hard to catch the dot. It's really hard to see my optic even, but with the 193, I can kind of catch it. So depending on the height and the type of optic you will have, um, this may be a, a yay or a nay. So pay attention to that when you go to buy something. If you're one of those people that have to work in a helmet with ear pro with gas mask, yeah, the optic mount's gonna matter. So if this is something that you deal with, uh, definitely check it out. Uh, the the Arasaka one should help. <clears throat> now, that is just talking about the candid optics. Right, so candid 45 degree ones. Um, and I, I, people are gonna ask, like I said, Arasaka offset candid one is the one I'm using with a Scalar Works leap mount. So now let's talk about a top mount, mounted optic, right? So top, top mounted or 12 o'clock mounted. So uh, 12 o'clock mounted uh, optics are <laughs> kind of becoming my favorite so far. Um, 
not because it's like wildly awesome or anything like that. It's just, it gives me the ability, mainly it gives me the ability to put my optic at the lowest mount I can um, and still give me a red dot that's uh, usable for night vision. So that's, that's my main reasoning, but that's my personal reasoning. Now let's look at some of the pros and cons. So some of the pros here that we can talk about with this type of setup is that it is ambi as hell, right? So, <laughs> I mean, it's on top. So it's ambi here, I could flip it, and it's ambi. So no matter what uh, setup I use, uh, optic-wise, or I'm sorry, uh, shoulder-wise, it's ambidextrous at that moment, whether it's my scoped optic or my magnified optic or my red dot. So that's, that's really, really, really convenient. Uh, I know I like to be able to handle my rifle with both sides. Some people don't care to. You do you, boo-boo. Um, going further, it is at a night vision height. It's gas mask height, and it's force-on-force -force mask height. So you could use it with all of those depending on the type of masks, helmets, and, and all that jazz, that jazz that you're using. So just something to realize, uh, you can see here that it works really well with my gas mask uh, and helmet and my amps. Um, going further, uh, you could find a target, right, prior to using the optic. So, so if I'm looking around and I find what I want out at 350, I could put my dot on it, then get down in my optic, and then press shots. So uh, my dot's going to be zero the same as my optic for the most part. So it's going to give me a good representation of where things are uh, because I can see them with my eyes and I can pinpoint it. Then I can look at it in my optic. Really good technique. I've seen a lot of PRS guys use it um, for, for uh, bolt gun stuff. And it's, it's a really good idea in my opinion because things get lost in a big ginormous range like that. Not so much if you're just hanging out on a straight line range, but if you have a really wide setup, uh, it, it can come in handy. So. Uh, further down, uh, dirty air doesn't affect it as much. So what do I mean by that? If you've ever used white light and shot under white light, uh, you'll notice that the second you start shooting, a big puff will cloud the area in front of you. Depending on your muzzle device, uh, whether it's a suppressor, a comp, or a, or a flash hider, you're gonna see different things. But really what happens is it just starts to cloud. Well, after the first couple shots, I could still see pretty well with this little red dot uh, versus what I could see when I was using the Canid one. And not that it's significantly better, but it did show a little bit better, which was cool, something to note, and something I put as a pro. Uh, going further down, it has a lower profile on the sides. So the sides are actually still a lower profile than you would expect out of a big setup like this. Yeah, I still have a light and laser on one side, but who cares? <laughs> like, uh, for, for some people, they want a lower profile this way because they're trying to put it in a bag or a box or their safe or a, a type of storage device like a drawer uh, for vehicles and stuff like that. So you'll find some guys can't put that much stuff width-wise, or I'm sorry, height-wise or width-wise. So that can be a con on both ends or a pro on both ends. Um, red dots uh, and this goes for both as a pro for both of them it's kind of nice to have a red dot versus having backup irons on the gun so either way that red dot it works a hundred times better than uh, irons uh, for speed for accuracy for just normal sympathetic nervous system eye awareness and what your eyes do during that sympathetic nervous system uh, uh, activation so just because of that it's better than irons, so deal with that. Um, <clears throat> zero at the same angle. So I can zero my optic here, and I can zero my red dot here. So I'm zeroing at the same exact angle. I can use the same bipod, I can use the same bag, whatever it is that I'm zeroing on, and I don't have to switch or cant the gun to get that same angle or find it. So I'm able to zero at a normal angle that I'm used to, and then the, and kind of goes hand in hand with this one is stock placement, right? The stock placement is gonna be very similar to the one that I'm used to, whether I'm shooting fast or I'm shooting real, real, real accurate. So it's kind of nice to be able to do both and have them both do the same thing. 
then some of the cons, right? So some of the cons to using a dot like this are gonna be very, uh, well, one of them is super prevalent, right? So the, the first con to using a dot like this is that I have to start out with a chin weld, right? Or I'm using a chin weld for the dot, and then I'm using a cheek weld for the optic. So you, you have to kind of play around with it and see if that's something that you're willing to do or have to train to it. Like everything else, it's training oriented. So be aware of that. Uh, height over bore, that is some people see that as a con. Uh, I've been using these uh, or high optics for my red dots for a long time or high mounts for my red dots for a long time. And they have had a height over bore that's very similar to that. Just a little bit shorter than 4.5 or 4.25 inches, which is what this one is height over bore wise. But the 226 mount from Unity, uh, the 233 mount from uh, ADM, both of them have really high height over bore, almost four inches. So just be aware of that when you're, when you're choosing this, you're gonna use a height over bore that's pretty high. So once again, have to train to it. And then uh, if your scope, right, has a high elevation turret, you may not be able to do this, or you may have to get a riser, which will make your chin weld even higher which is ridiculous and probably a little too much so be aware of that like the scope that you choose to do the setup needs to be solid and have a really low top turret just so you know um and then that actually goes for the 45 degree one that it needs to be a short windage turret otherwise that windage turret is going to take up too much space as well then going down uh last little a con that I have is it's limited to certain amount of mounts so you can't just use any mount kind of like you did with the 45 degree one or the candid one you have to use specific ones that are meant to mount a dot on top now they do make a ring mount that goes around scopes uh, I haven't used one so I can't speak to how good they are or how long they'll last uh, but the mounts that are out there for this kind of setup there are a few, I just I haven't played with a lot of them because I just haven't gotten my hands on them and I can't buy everything in the world. So I, I can only use so much. But hopefully this is something that, that you guys can see that there, there are some pros and cons to every setup that you're ever gonna play with, guys. Um, one of the biggest ones, like I said, is, or one of the best pros to using an offset red dot is that you nix irons off the whole entire game. Um, and then as you can see on both these rifles, they're both set up for suppressors, they're both set up for lasers and lights because that's the way that I do my things. Um, not to say that everybody has to set their stuff up like this, but that's a, that's a low light, no light rifle right there. So just something to be aware of. Um, and, and also not, not only that, but having this kind of dot set up is going to just give you more options in the long run. So. Just something to think about if you're looking at different optic setups and which one to kind of go with, whether you want to top mount it or cant it. Uh, once again, your preference, man. Take care.